So in today's video, I want to talk to you about the wicked path. And it may not be what you think it is. <clears throat> so in the other world and the beings that I interact with, and even in like ancient, uh, like ballads or um, documents or whatever, this has been talked about. And I find it to be true because I do interact with the beings of the other world or the unseen world. And so what they consider the wicked path is what the general population thinks is uh, the righteous path. Okay. So the, the wicked path to the beings of the other world, um, the spiritual realm or whatever, they see it as the, the wide path that most people follow blindly. And it's, it's the ones that it's more like a herd sheep mentality. And this would be like the Abrahamic religions where they just have been promised this, you know, <clears throat> afterlife and being incarnate is sinful um, you're born in sin because the act of of um, SEX is sinful. And so everyone's born in sin. And they go very much against the natural laws of the universe and, and of nature. Um, I'm, I have to make notes. And I'm not editing my videos anymore. I've, I've said that before. So I might have to look down. Um It's uh, that road and what the leaders of those times created was a fantasy. And most people believe in the fantasy. And if you talk to people that are in mainstream religions or cults or anything like that, they believe in this fantasy and this <clears throat> afterlife, this road to heaven. If I do all these good things, I'm going to be rewarded in the afterlife. <clears throat> and what I've told is heaven's here. Earth is seen as heaven. And so you can make it a heaven or you can make it a hell. There's no afterlife like heaven. There's different dimensions you can go to. Um, but <clears throat> they've tricked everybody, kind of bamboozled everybody. Most of the reasons that these organized religion started, it was coming from more like psychopaths and, and leaders of, of countries and everything in order to control the population and make them be pacifists and turn the other cheek and um, just give over their power. Okay. And so the, the path they consider that wicked, like giving away your power. Um, and so, and they, they of course talk about this imaginary God that is out there and that you pray to, and it's separate from you. Um, animism and this path, we know that that's not true. Okay. There's no punishing God. Um, the God, God doesn't take sides. What, we don't, in animism, we don't call this force God. It's neutral. It doesn't take sides. It permeates everything. It permeates you, me, nature. Um, and again, if you want to like re, re you know, um, talk about things in the Bible or like Jesus said, he would say things like, Look for me under a rock or split a piece of wood. I mean, it was, it's everywhere. Okay. And there it's, it just permeates everything. So people that are like praying for their, you know, they're playing a sport and they're praying that their team wins or whatever. God doesn't take sides. Okay. It's you. And if you lose, it's because the other team outperformed you in some way. Okay. There's no force taking sides and determining these things. It's you. And you are responsible 
for everything that's happening in your life. Yes, we were born maybe in situations we didn't con couldn't control, but now you have control as you get older to make certain choices and um, determine your your future here. Let's see what else. Um, so they consider <clears throat> the righteous road or the, the, yeah, I guess, I don't know what else to call it. Like <clears throat> organized religion thinks they're the righteous one. They consider the righteous road <clears throat> the one a lot of us are on. It's the road that's narrower. It's less traveled. It's full of thorns and, and it's not as easy. And that's why a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people just seek the comfort of organized religion. It's easier to just give your power away and believe in a fantasy. And, you know, maybe it makes you feel good and coddles you. This path doesn't coddle you. It's trying to empower you that you are your own God. Okay, this is a path of realizing of self-deification. That there's nothing outside of you that's going to save you. Okay, this is a path of self-discovery. And along the way, instead of like, you know, coming to terms with God or whatever, um, you are coming to terms with yourself. And so it's not the easiest path. And that's why a lot of people will give up. But this is considered in the spirit world or the other world. This is the righteous path. Um, we don't have a yoke around our neck, like false belief systems or anything like that. We follow the natural laws of the universe and nature itself. Um, we see there's life and death in nature, there's light and dark in nature, and we work with it and we have to come to terms with it. That is true. We're not polarized in one way and we're just like in the light, light, light. And we're not just in the dark, dark, dark. We can play with both because we see in nature is your best teacher. You know, you see that things are just being themselves. There's no mask. And we see that there's energies of predator and prey and death and birth and, and all that. So you just have to um, take your greatest lessons from watching nature itself. And that's why a lot of people are afraid to go into forests and nature and everything like that, because it can be harsh. And that's this path. It's not easy. This is, I believe, the true spiritual awakening path. It's not easy. It's not love and light and rainbows and, and this fantasy. It's very, very deep. It's very confronting. It's very uncomfortable. But this is your freedom. This is you getting off the wheel. This is you saving yourself. Nobody... It's impossible when you understand the laws of the universe. You Nothing can come in and, and save you from your evolution and your transformation. It's you have to do it yourself. Nobody's coming to save you. Okay. And then it's working with the natural world and the laws of the natural world. Um, in religion, they, they tell you that you're in control and you dominate the natural world. That's a harsh lesson. If you've ever <laughs> been in any type, type of a natural disaster or, or anything like that, nature wins every time. Okay. Um, if you leave something like old civilizations or whatever, you know, you, the, the nature just comes in and overtakes it. So you need to learn to work with it and know that there's laws of nature on this path too. You also, um, 
work with the unseen realm and its influences and um, they will come in to try to influence you in a, as a way to guide you. And if you pay attention to it and they see that you're making an effort, um, you get a, a lot of guidance. Okay. So as long as you shut out the natural world and its laws, the unseen world really won't come in. And if you're giving your power away, and that could be to organize religion, politicians, uh, celebrities. It could even be someone you're in a relationship with. You're focusing on them. Um, I mean, this dimension is kind of run by psychopaths and they will do everything like this, you know, the whole narcissism thing. They will love bomb you. They will tell you what you want to hear. They will throw money at you. You know, it's, it's just to get your loyalty and it's, and they'll, you know, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to save you and my bleeding heart and, and all that kind of stuff. You'll see that same tactic that religion used. You're going to see it in politicians. You're going to see it with celebrities and other people. So you have to be very aware on, the, on this path of, how these types of individuals have kind of taken over this dimension and the more people that can like break out of that and not worship all these celebrities and politicians and people and religions. Um, we need to stop doing that and live more in, in with the natural laws and develop relationships with the unseen. And I know some people haven't been able to see the unseen. <clears throat> I have, I know it exists. I work with other people that also have, and I know it exists. And people want scientific proof and it's never gonna happen. The unseen world is something, when they interact with you, you have to have earned it, okay? They actually help initiate you onto this path. So that's <clears throat> another path. Now, like the ultimate righteous path that they see is going with the underworld path. That is the one that's extremely narrow and it's dangerous and <clears throat> it's, it's full of challenges and adversarial forces wanting you to face yourself and your fears and your false belief systems. And this is an actual place. Um, Again, I've talked about this. This has been talked about in every culture, Tibetan, Egyptian, uh, Celtic, um, the Kabbalah. Which they don't really talk about the clip off very much, but this is the underworld. This is a very challenging place. And you are confronting yourself. You're confronting other beings that are trying to mirror back to you. Um false things um, that you believe in, again, fears, uh, everything like that. It's extremely challenging. You'll get animals, you'll get all types of beings coming at you. Um, and again, I go there astrally when I was going through it, but you can also, it plays out in your real world, in your, this third dimension. So you're facing it in the underworld and it kind of plays out in the real world. So if you're not remembering going into the underworld and facing these forces, it will play out in the third dimension. <clears throat> and this is the true like spiritual awakening. When I talk to people that have gone through this, it's not your Kundalini awakening and you see this Lotus and light and love. It's not how that is. Um, you can get there, but you, the ultimate path is doing the underworld path. It is a path of, uh, it's the most transformational. And these beings, once they see that you have this type of disposition and that you haven't fallen for all the rhetoric and the brainwashing that's out there, sometimes they will even initiate you on this path. I have a whole playlist of the secret path. 
And when this was happening to me, I didn't, I had no clue what was happening. Um, and it was terrifying for me because I had no clue. I had to go to really ancient documents. It's very common in uh, cultures that still practice shamanism. And um, you have to go to like really, really old cultures to know about this journey to the underworld. It's been demonized and the beings that live there have been demonized, but they're actually your for, they're your liberation. The others are not for your liberation. These false gods that have been invented, they will keep you <clears throat> incarnating and powerless. Um, so if you do keep going and <clears throat> this, this path is for the brave, even if you, you know, it's challenging and I can't believe I got through it, but if you are successful, um, these beings that challenged you, they become your allies. They become your friends and you have such like this great team behind you. <laughs> So you just, you just have to understand what's happening to you um, on this path. Instead of going into fear and jumping to organized religion because they've demonized this path. They Again, they've demonized the main deities on this path have, you know, been called everything, the devil, all that kind of stuff. Okay. These are just ancient gods and beings that have been here longer than we have. They, the original inhabitants of earth. Okay. And we became denser and denser as time has gone on, but they have stayed in this, this um, less dense dimension. And they are here to help those humans that have not been brainwashed and are on this path to freedom and sovereignty and not being bamboozled by everything that's around us. Um, and again, if we want to, you know, I, I do believe Jesus is someone that really lived and he was very rebellious. He was against all this church, church entity. Um, I have videos on him. Um, and he even says, in Psalms, I don't know which one it is. He even says, like, haven't I told you guys, you are gods. Okay. And people that question that, you know, the church tries to explain it. Well, he's not really saying that you're gods. You're doing it. I'm like, there were so many things that he was saying that the church tries to explain a different way. But if I walked up to you and I said, you are gods, how are you going to interpret? It's like, oh, I am. You know, we are. Um, we're all aspect of that energy. It's a neutral energy that imbues everything. I don't know what you want to call it. I'm, I'm, I don't really like using the word God because it has that image of a, you know, bearded guy up in the sky. But it is infused in everything. And... We're not separate from it. You are responsible for yourself, saving yourself. Um, and when, you know, I see videos of people, they win something and they're like, praise to God, Jesus, you know, like you did that, you know? And there's this great video by Snoop Dogg. I will put it down below when he was getting his star on the, Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I love what he said. He gave all the praise to himself for working so hard and everything. And people are laughing at him, but it's true. So you, you have to do the work. You have to take ownership of your life. You have to make the effort if you want something. This is a, this is a realm of taking ownership of everything and working hard. I mean, it, it's a difficult realm to be in but we gain so much wisdom by incarnating in this realm we get exposed to everything we get exposed to the evils of humanity and we get exposed to the loving good things about humanity and the harshness of the natural law and the beauty of the nat of nature so it's just how you view it 
and stop giving your power away. Don't believe in anything that takes your power from you. Okay. So watch that, that um, speech that Snoop Dogg made and people might say, Oh, he just gave thanks to himself. And that's so, you know, narcissistic. I don't believe it is. I think he kind of gets it. Um, and he understands he did it all himself. It was a lot of hard work for him. All right. So that's it for today's video. Um, again, we live in an inverted reality, so they have made what is righteous, um, wicked and what is wicked, the righteous. And we're seeing that play out, um, in the world right now. So again, question everything. Um, remember everything's inverted and, um, yeah, I'll be talking to you soon. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.